Hebrews are coming, coming, coming. Hebrews are coming, yeah. yeah. Hebrews are coming, coming, coming. Hebrews are coming, yeah. Hundred thousand, forty-four thousand. Hundred thousand, forty-four thousand. Hundred thousand, forty-four thousand. Hundred thousand, forty-four thousand. Hebrews are coming, coming. Hebrews are coming, yeah. Hebrews are coming, coming, coming. Hebrews are coming, yeah. Hundred thousand, forty-four thousand. Hundred thousand, forty-four thousand. Hundred thousand, forty-four thousand. Hundred thousand, forty-four thousand. We ain't playing, yeah. Standing on these corners, yeah. We taking games, yeah. Put them in the Bible, yeah. Ezekiel 37, great and seated on me, yeah. Come see what we about. We'll change it out. We moving out. You my battle life. And what was the war? What you waiting here for? Come see what the hell you're facing. With D, he'll break the nation. Sounds like a little revelation. Infinite, inexplicable. We say call her all Yahweh by Hashem Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. And that is all praises and honor to the great and terrible power, Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls God. And we do so in the name yeah. of his only begotten son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, whose name is Yahweh Shah. Who are we? We are once again the Hebrew Israelites. And we're coming out here to declare the truth of the Bible. We're living in times where the truth is not appreciated, but the truth will not be ignored anymore. It's going to be up and personal, even in this time of where we call have a lot of socialites, or this time of social media, uh, this time of YouTubers. The truth, the gospel is coming, and it's going to be preached everywhere, and we're coming into that time. So what are we here to do? Well, we're here to give the biblical narrative according to anthropology, archaeology, um, and just plain common sense. So give me the book of Baruch 4, and I want to start at verse 1. You can give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, and we'll start at the top as well. So we want to give you the truth about the Bible, and if anybody wants to inquire, again, uh, you're welcome to come up here and engage us. Uh, we will not bite if you don't bite. We will not fight if you don't fight. We're not here to for violence, but we will defend ourselves. All right, so read what you got. This is the book of Baruch chapter 4 verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. So the law for those that are teaching Christianity has done a number on the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians for a very long time. What do I mean by that? The deception in America is at an all-time high. There's been many years and centuries of deception. One of the greatest deceptions is that the Messiah is a so-called European and he came and died for everybody. That's a deception and that was done purposely. Uh, what we're living in times where Christmas even now in this season is being celebrated by people that have no relationship or should not have any relationship with Christmas. Christmas was an indoctrination that was forced among a people through rape, rob, and murder. So you can go all the way back to the maybe 1500s, maybe around 1539, when Christmas was instituted in America under the so-called white man. And it's actually the Spaniards, the conquistadors. And they established that in a place called Tallahassee, uh, Florida. So this is where we see, you know, an uprising of immorality and lies and you were slaves, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians, and this was forced upon you. And so we see that today, but the law, my point is the law is very important for our people if we want to experience any freedom. If you want to return to your power and get away from the lies, then the law is going to be necessary for those lies to start to come off of you and out of your minds, out of your thinking, so you're not still celebrating Christmas New Year's. You know, you know, all their holidays celebrate of their oppression and their conquering of a people. So that's what we're seeing today. All the, their celebrations, all their celebrations are associated with them defeating you. You were, you were cooking cornbread for them on Christmas. You were picking cotton for them on Christmas Day. You were being given as a gift on Christmas Day. So read what you got. Come, all they that keep it shall come to life. So if you keep the law, you shall come to life. So it's very, you see the tricks that are being played in America? You don't have to keep the law. The law is done away with. It, it doesn't make any sense. Read on. 
but such as leave it shall die. But what? But such as leave it shall die. And that's what has happened to us. It may not have been a physical death, which that has happened to our people. And we do die and we perish for a lack of knowledge because we reject the knowledge of the law. We reject that. But the scriptures bear record that you're going to die. You're also going to die spiritually. You're going to die. You're going to lose your heritage. You're going to lose your land. You're going to lose the authority that you once had as the chosen people of the Most High. All right. Read on. Verse 2. Turn thee, O Jacob. And take hold of it. Do what? Turn thee, O Jacob. Take hold of what? And take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof. Now he's talking about the law. He's talking about the law. Why is this? Because if you don't have the law, then you're walking in darkness. And especially as the chosen people. He said Jacob. So we know that Jacob, again, the progenitor of Israel, the Israelites. This is a birthline. This is a birthright. It is your birthright as a so-called Negro, Latino, Native American, Seminole, Indian, to take hold of the law. Read on. That thou mayest be illuminated. That you may be what? Eliminated. I mean, it's like it. illuminated. Illuminated. Because it's funny. If you don't have the law, you don't have the light. And there, by default, you are eliminated. And our people are being eliminated all over the planet earth now man we don't have the truth we don't have the sense of the truth we don't have wisdom all right we don't have knowledge to overcome this oppression that's been going on for centuries and the fact is that when you celebrate <laughs> these holidays or hella days it shows your indoctrination and that you're not walking in the light so that's why the law is very important and that's why we're out here read on give not thine honor to another Give not your honor to another. That's what our people do when we are associate these heathen days with our beliefs and our practice. Now their customs have become our customs. Now their ways have become our ways. And that's contrary to the Bible. We don't. Nor the things that are profitable unto thee to a strange nation. So you have other people keeping your laws. You have others keeping your feast days to the point where it is a exalted them to the point where the whole world for a time believed that those people are you. They believe that those people that are over in the so-called Middle East, they believe that those people are you to the tune where they believe that they are you. Where they have taken your identity. Many of them know that they are not ethnic Israelites, yet they make these impotent claims. Why? Because they know that even those laws that are associated with the biblical children of Israel as, will exalt them to be even, even if it's a farce, to look like the chosen people. Right? Hold well, what you got. Give me Deuteronomy 4 and 1. It's Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 1. Now therefore, hearken, O Israel. Do what? Hearken, O Israel. So when Moses was given the laws to the children of Israel and to the children of Israel only, he was telling us to hearken. And this is for a reason, because we had been in bondage. We had been in hard bondage under the captivity of Egypt, all right? The rule of Pharaoh. And today we're still under that rule essentially, because you're still practicing heathen customs that was associated with your captivity. Many of our people, again, we don't even understand that. We don't care to comprehend it. That's deep indoctrination. That's deep manipulation. And this has happened over centuries. Now the scales are starting to come from our eyes. The truth is being given to a people that have been destitute of it for centuries. And now it's time to awake out of sleep, O Israel. Read. Hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you. And this is why the so-called Jews over in Israel have to promote the Torah to substantiate it, that the farce that they are the true Israelites. They have to do it because without the Torah, then you don't have a leg to stand on. But here's the secret. It was never meant for them. It was never meant for them. Give me the book of Revelations 2 and 9. Let's bring that up. The book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 9. You know. I know thy works and tribulation. This is a Messiah speaking. 
And he's speaking to the Israelites. He knows our works and our tribulation, man. Come on. And poverty. And our poverty. Us being in a destitute position. When have the so-called Jews ever been in this destitute position in which Hamashiach is talking about? Since you've known of their existence roughly about 1948. Come on. Come. And I, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy. Now, we have to stop there, thou art rich. Why are we rich? Because as powerful as the law is and what was given to us would make us be above all other nations to the point where we would, according to the biblical record and to the blessings and the curses of Deuteronomy 28, that we would be the lender, all right? We wouldn't be the borrower, that we would be the head and not the tail. All those blessings, and that would only come through strict observance and obedience to the law. Read. Right? And I know the blasphemy. And he knows what? The blasphemy. So blasphemy. It's blasphemous. It's blasphemy. What is the blasphemy in which Hamashiach Yahawashah, who the world in calls Jesus, is talking about? Read. Right? Of them. Of who? Of them. That means that's a certain other group of people. All right? So we can't all be all in one pot and I love everybody. He says it's blasphemy of them that do this. He never says that these people can repent from this. He says it's blasphemy. And what he said would echo through time, man, even to this present day. Because it's still blasphemy. It was blasphemy then and it's blasphemy now. It was blasphemy in 70 AD, and it's blasphemy in 2023. It's blasphemous to say that this right here, according to the Messiah, read. Come, and I know the blasphemy of them, which say they are Jews. That say they are ethnic Jews by bloodline, all right? By the birth of their fathers. What was it said? How did they leave Egypt black and end up as a PFE? which is a pink flesh entity. How did they leave it Egypt so-called black? In other words, you left an Israelite and you, you, you showed up as an Edomite. That doesn't make no sense. Somebody's lying. There's a thief, there's a fox in the hen house. And it's only one way to get rid of, well, it's two ways. You either move or you get rid of the fox. All right, read. And are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. But are what? But are the synagogue of Satan. So the Messiah bears record that there's a group of people that's going around saying that they're ethnic Israelites or ethnic Jews. But he bears record that it's the synagogue of Satan. Why the church don't teach this? Because they don't want to wake up the true people. And this goes back to the deception all the way to when you're going to celebrate a pagan Holiday, a Hellenistic celebration as a so-called Negro. It's a shame for a so-called Negro to walk around saying Merry Christmas. That, that's, that's a shame, man. And the most I dealt with our people because of it. Read what you got. Go back to uh, Deuteronomy 4. It says, Now, therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you. Here goes the law, and this which would separate us from every other people on planet Earth. Read on. For to do them. For the what? For to do them. For to do them. Show me the biblical record, the instructions where Christmas was to be celebrated. Show me that in the Bible, where the Messiah even authorized his birthday. You're not going to find that. Show me where the Messiah said, hey, everybody, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Show me that. Show me where his father said, hey, everybody, when the Messiah was born, Merry Christmas. That never happened. It never happened. This was instituted by liars, deceivers, whoremongers, fornicators, adulterers. Read. Hmm? That ye may live and go in and possess the land. You know, if they keep... You indoctrinated as a so-called Negro, Latino, Native American, Seminole Indian, you would never possess the land because you, you're going to associate your land with their land. This land is your land. 
This land is my land. No, it's the Native Americans. How about that? How about having that song? This land we stole. Can you imagine the European songs that would be sung in America if they were to tell it the truth? Right. This land we stole from the Native Americans. And we had slaves. That's why we are strong. Come on, man. It would be ridiculous. Wouldn't nobody even listen to that garbage, man. That's why they deceive our people with mindless music about self-hatred. And they're okay to promote that. But if they were to tell the truth, their kingdom would go down overnight. So the European is a facilitator of lies. And this is why you have white privilege in America. Because white privilege is not only being per perpetuated by so-called Europeans, white privilege is being enforced by so-called Negroes because of ignorance. Whenever you join hand in hand with them and think that they're your friend, you keep hanging out with snakes, you're going to get bit. Right. All right? And we don't have time to figure out if they're separatists or not because the overwhelming majority have proved that they have a lot of venom and they're still biting. They're still dangerous. Read what you got. And go in and possess the land. And do what? And possess the land. That don't sound like we're sharing anything. So the Bible and what the indoctrination of your oppressor teaches you are two different things. What you're learning in church is different than a lot of what the Bible says. The Bible says, let's go to Matthew 15, 24. But let's see what the preacher teaches. Let's see what the preacher teaches. Matthew 15, 24 is what the Bible says. Read this. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. Yeah. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, that should have you ask, who are the lost sheep of the house of Israel? God. This is what the Messiah is saying. I'm not sent, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So who are the Israelites? Where did they come from? How did they get here? And why the church is not putting emphasis on who are the ethnic Israelites? They were always ethnic Israelites. The Messiah was an ethnic Israelite. Jeremiah was an ethnic Israelite. John the Baptist was an ethnic Israelite. The apostles were ethnic Israelites. Moses was an ethnic Israelite. Aaron was an ethnic Israelite. So why aren't we identifying what the Bible is identifying? Why aren't we witnesses to what the Bible is a witness and bear records of? It's through deception. And that's why the most I wanted us as so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians to read and get understanding. The Bible says in all by getting, get understanding. What's the first thing they didn't want you to do when you came over here? Read. read. They said, you know what? Um, a so-called Negro is more dangerous. It's not, a, not him not having a gun. We ain't worried about him having a gun. He got a gun. It's a bunch of Negroes with guns. What do we do with the guns we have now? We turn on one another. I'm not worried. The so-called European, the PFE, the pink flesh entity, the pig flesh, flesh entity is not afraid of a so-called Negro with gun. With a gun. He's afraid of a so-called Negro with knowledge of himself. Right. Because that Negro turns into Nat Turner. <laughs> That Negro turns into Denmark Vesey. Bring that out. Bring that that Negro has a mindset, I'll even say, like Khalid Muhammad. You understand that there is an oppressor and that we have an adversary. Read what you got. God, this is Judith chapter 5, verse 20. Now, yeah. therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people and, and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin. This is our ruin because we have broken the laws. We've broken the covenant of the Heavenly Father, which was just to the children of Israel. And as long as these people could keep us separated from that contract, then we would be ruined. And we're ruined to this day. Look at the prisons. Who are they filled up with? The chosen people. All right. Who makes money off of one group of people more than any other group of people on the planet Earth? The so-called European man. And that's why he's not going to let you go. He don't want you to go, brother. So this is why Moses said, let my people go. The same people that need to be let go in America who were brought over here on slave ships. Those are the true children of Moses. Those are the true Israelites. 
and we're still talking about let my people go. At the scene of the crime, there's going to be evidence if you look hard enough. We haven't looked hard enough as the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. We have stopped investigating. We, they have taught us to stop looking. Oh, don't worry about that. Just Cardi B this thing. Don't worry about that. Just Jay-Z this thing. You know, it, it's getting crazy that even if you reach the pinnacle of financial wealth as a so-called Negro in America, it's a death sentence. How the hell you got millions of dollars and you can't go back to your neighborhood? <laughs> That's because you are people that have been duped and deceived in believing that you share in your oppressor's victory. You don't. You don't have the same victory. It's been proven. Buy the same car he has, live in the same area he lives in, and then see how you treat it. You don't have the same victory. You celebrating Christmas and they looking at you laughing because you make them rich. You might as well have a Christmas tree, Santa Claus, and a Ku Klux Klan member all on, uh, eating Christmas dinner with you. Because it's the same thing, man. You might as well invite the Ku Klux Klan over for Christmas dinner. Because it's oppression. What are you? And go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. So that should make you, who are the people that the Heavenly Father gave land to historically and that we don't possess it right now. Come on, y'all gotta do the research, read on. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish up from me. That's why we read Matthew 15, 24. They have taught us to add to the word and diminish from it by teaching us things that are additives and things that they have nutrients that they have removed. The same way they do in the GMO foods. The same way they do in medicines. They extract what is good and contaminate it and regurgitate it and give it back to you as though it's something beneficial. If it's tainted, it'll never be beneficial. I don't care what organic substance you have. If you lace it with cyanide, it's a contaminant. It's going to kill you. And that's what they've done. They tried to take the truth and mix it with a lie. It's a lie. It's nothing useful. Right. All right? We don't. Con, you want that Baruch again? Or? Con. Con, Baruch 4 and 5. Be of good cheer, my people, the memorial of Israel. Who? The memorial of Israel. He said, my people, not all people. So we got to get out of this stupor of indoctrination and believing that the PFE, the pink flesh entity, is going to tell you the truth. All right? The sun won't let him tell you the truth. <laughs> the sun will not let the PFE, the pink flesh entity, tell you the truth. The sun is opposed to him. The whole earth, you got sharks that are opposed to him. You got aliens, so-called aliens that are opposed to them. Did you hear about this odd circling... Uh, your beloved, especially the so-called Negro, they love sleepy Joe Biden. You see this orb? You hear about the orb circular? Even the, the, the whole host of heaven is against this man. That you want to ride alongside him and support him, man. It, it's unbelievable. Read on. I got it. Bring it up. Hebrews 12, 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat so his birthright. So he doesn't have a relationship with the Most High that we do. He already sold it. He gave it up. And what did he gain? He gained the world. What does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? That's Esau. He lost his soul. He's the example. We just read it in Hebrews 12, 16. Unless there be any profane person such as Esau, the PFE, the pink flesh entity, you got to stay away. He's the alien. He's the cancer. We got to come back to the truth. Read what you got. God, it says, That ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Come on. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. Now, this is very important. You see what the Most High, and a lot of us don't associate with this heritage or this biblical account, this factual occurrence. 
The Most High destroyed the Israelites that worshipped other deities, man. Those that idolized Baal, which is a pagan deity. And you'll see that word Baal all throughout Israel's captivities. And this is the same deity that would exalt itself above the Most High. And our people gave him power by submitting to it. That's why he wanted us to leave Egypt so we could serve him. Not so we could celebrate Christmas or the practice of the heathens. That's right. And that's what we're doing today. So you see how important, you know, people say, well, I've been doing this all my life. Well, you could have had cancer all your life. Don't you want it to be away? Don't you want it to leave you? If they came up with a cure, when you say, I'm ex no, I've, I've had cancer all my life, I'm accepting of it. I've had cancer all my life. <laughs> that's the so-called Negro, man. We are comfortable in oppression. We have become satisfied in deteriorating. We don't even believe that anything good can happen to us. We've suffered so long, and I understand it. You suffered so long at the hands of the PFE that you believe this is the natural paradigm to live. But that's why we're out here to give you the good news, man. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. The Heavenly Father has come to deliver the so-called Negro, Latino, Native American, and Senegal Indian. And one of the first things he would deliver you from is the indoctrination of your oppressors. And that's why we're out here, man. Read what you got. For all the men that followed by our pure, the Lord thy God have destroyed them from among you. And this is what's happening to our people. We're seeing all our leaders. Look at all the leaders. Now P. Diddy is coming up on charges. They all the way from Bill Cosby, all the way to everybody that you associated as a so-called Negro as having made it in America, they're being torn down. And that's the most high destroying them because they worship a power other than him. It's the same spirit. That Baal Peor spirit, man. It's another deity. We still sacrifice your children. It may not look physically, but they're doing that too. Uh, doesn't the so-called Illuminati, because we're the real illuminated ones, don't they have to sacrifice? Don't they sacrifice their children? Many of our so-called leaders and the Negroes that we look up to have sacrificed us to their oppressor for, for silver. In the same way that they Judas betrayed the Messiah, our people have betrayed one another, man. For pieces of silver. Hold on what you got. Give me Matthew 23. And start at verse uh, 1. Read what you got. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God. This is what we have to do. Because the Most High is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. If he destroyed us for adultery before. He's destroying us for adultery now. Where are your leaders now? Where are the Jesse Noacks and Jacksons? Where are the owl sharp tongues at? Where they at? They've been relegated to do do. Do nothings. All right? Read. Are alive every one of you this day. So those that cleave to the most high, you'll be alive. And the thing about being alive in your Yahweh, your Yahweh, you can't kill the spirit. You can't kill the righteousness. Righteousness, his righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. All right? Read what you got. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 1. Then spake Yahawashai to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. This is going to be another cut to whoever believes that this book is for everybody. So he said the scribes and the Pharisees at the times, these are the words of the Messiah. He said they sit in Moses' seat. So they have that authority that Moses has. All right? The NLT says it this way. They are the religious leaders or teachers of the time. We don't. Come. The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe. Now for the, for the haters of the Israelites, no matter what nationality you are, you're all going to be destroyed if you don't take heed and understand that Yahweh did not come to destroy the law, but to actually establish, and we're showing you right here where he established the authority of the law. He said, even the Pharisees that sit in Moses' authority, what did Moses do? He gave the law, statutes, and commandments to the Israelites. Did he give them to every nation? 
So this should tell you too that this is a separation that he's teaching. Yahweh is reinforcing the doctrine of not everyone's included. The doctrine of exclusion. Not everyone is included. We don't. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you, observe. So whatever they tell you to do from the law, you're supposed to do. They're the religious authority. Do you think the Pharisees would tell you to love everybody? That's not in the Torah of that time. You couldn't manipulate John 3.16 doing that because there was no John 3.16 at that time. Yahweh is telling you, now who are you going to believe? Your lying pastor, your lying teacher, or the words of the Messiah? He said, whatever these religious leaders tell you to do, you need to do it. They sit as an authority in Moses' seat. His seat is authority. Moses gave the law, statutes, commandments to the Israelites. That's why it's so important that we keep it. Because even the Messiah knew that this is the only way that the Israelites would be free. And to come out of the indoctrination of their oppressors. The same Roman Greco world that's in existed today. The same Roman Greco world that's Hellenizing the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians today. Read. That observe and do, but do not ye after their works. But don't do after their works. So even, he said, there's an authority that I give them. That you do what they say. But don't do what they do, their works. He didn't say don't do the works of the Torah. He said do what they tell you out of the law. Read. For they say and do not. For they teach the laws, but they don't keep the laws. So this is also the Messiah telling you that we have to keep laws. We have to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. That if he came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, only for them and we just read, and then he's telling you to keep the laws of Moses, right here. Read on. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders. So they come up with Roman Greco European ideology, Hellenistic ideology, like Christmas. Yeah, y'all need to, you know, if they throw that in there or they celebrate it, you see hypocrisy with them. They tell you to keep the laws, but they. They rubbing elbows with, with the Roman Greco, you know, got, got an Easter bunny on their arm. You know what I'm talking about. They show up in the winter. All right, I think they call it snow or something. Anyway, we do But they themselves. Uh, Easter bunny in the winter is what? All right, go ahead. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But they won't do anything. They're lazy. They're, like James said, they're hearers of the word only but not doers of the word. So you have to watch those, those people. And we got a lot of those people in, this, in Israel right now. But the law supersedes everything. How dare you, pastor? How dare you, grandma? How dare you, auntie? How dare you, school teachers? How dare you, mothers and fathers, teach that we don't have to keep the law, statutes, and commandments? It is our covenant. It is our strength. It is our authority. It is our deliverance. Read. Come. It says, verse 5, but all their works they do for to be seen of men. This is the problem. Because we got a lot of see me. Once again, we're in that generation. You know what I'm talking about, Yahshua. People, it's getting to the point where people just want to acknowledge themselves to the point they want to acknowledge the food they eat that's associated with them. Do you know what you do as a direct representative of who you are? There's no separation of two. I'm a good person. How? Why? Why are you a good person? What is it about you that makes you a good person? And we need to know from the authority. What's the definition of good? The Messiah said there isn't one that's, that's good, that's great, which is the Heavenly Father. So if you're not doing this saith the Most High, then you're not good. Uh, Read. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 17, verse 10. And the elect shall praise his holy name. Come on. Beside this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for inheritance. You see that? He gave the Israelites knowledge and the law for an inheritance. You'll never have, you'll never have what's valuable from who loves you if you don't take hold of it, man. 
You know, if I leave a will and say, you got to do this to get this, to get this goal, the million dollars, then you would do it. The Most High is telling the so-called Negroes that you got to keep these laws to get this goal. That's right. You got to keep these laws to get eternal life. You got to get keep these laws to be a power in the earth. I've called you to be separate from every other nation. Come on. He made an everlasting covenant with them. This covenant ain't going nowhere, so the law ain't going nowhere. Ain't nothing changed. Anybody teach you something like that, you need to run away from them you, and, and, and tell them to repent. Repent, but I can't be around you no more teaching stuff like that. Even the Messiah said, listen, this is how powerful the law is. Do what the people tell you to do from the Torah, from the law, but don't do as they do. So the truth can come out of the mouth of a hypocrite. But this is how evil the PFE is. He won't even tell you the truth. Because it wasn't meant for him. The Pharisees were Israelites. <laughs> That's it. Even the Pharisees, they had that authority because they were Israelites. Nobody else has that authority. So we got to be hearers, though, of the word as well as doers. But we got too many people that are hypocrites, man. And this is why. Read that verse again. Verse 5. This is Matthew 23 and 5. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. We got a lot of people that want to be seen by somebody else. But why you don't acknowledge the Most High? Why do you care what man thinks about you, but you don't care what the Most High thinks about you? I got to keep Christmas because my mama doing it. Anybody that loves mother, father, sister, brother more then the Heavenly Father is not worthy of them. That's why we don't have no deliverance. That's why we're getting shot down like dogs in the street. That's why we're still talking about we shall overcome. Now that's become the mantra of another people. A whole other nation has taken we shall overcome. You got Palestinians going around here talking about we shall overcome. It's unbelievable. You got so-called Europeans talking about we shall overcome. I'm being oppressed by the black man. Come on, man. This is getting ridiculous in America. Read. They make broad their phylacteries. They want to be seen. Uh, 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 my YouTube, uh, you know, uh, uh, right here you can cash at me. Uh, here, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Come on, man. Read. And enlarge the borders of their garments. They want to be seen. The key is they want to be acknowledged by men. Read on. And love the uppermost rooms at feasts. They want to be seen. It's all about them. Pleasers of men. To be seen by men. Read. And the chief seats in the synagogues. Read on. And greetings in the markets. Come on, acknowledge me. I'm this. I'm that. I'm a captain of 10 million. I'm, I'm the bishop of the sea. Come on, man. You're supposed to be winning souls. Don't nobody give a, nobody should give a damn about who you are if, they, if you're a hypocrite. Nobody give a damn about, what you do is going to speak for you, to whom it matters. Read. Come. And greetings in the markets and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. You want to be called, but I'm the greatest teacher. I'm the greatest teacher alive. Right? Read on. Come. It says, verse 8, but be not ye called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Hamashiach, and all ye are brethren. And this is what we need to, to understand, man. Give me uh, Matthew 6. And verse uh, 1 and read down to 5. Read what you got. This Matthew 6 and verse 1. Take heed that ye do not your alms before men. And this is what we have to do, beloveds. Stop trying to be seen of men and that we stop doing things for people, especially the so called Negro. In this social media generation, man, that's all people are doing, man. Everything is for clicks and likes. You'll even tell on yourself for clout. You got, you got people telling on themselves for clout. You want to be seen so bad that you'll air your own dirty laundry out for the world to see, man. At one time, my world was born. Right. You, you have to be able to keep a secret. So you can't even keep a secret now. 
You got men that are infeminate, and you got women that are masculine. Right. This social media has done a job on our people, man. You got men that have transgendered their spirit to now they're a woman in their spirit. Oh! Oh, I'm a tear. I'm so emotional. I'm so emotional. Man, it used to be a time, man, we were the stabilizers of our house. We were the protectors of our house. But this is what an infeminate nation would produce. This is what your oppressor would, would do. He would buck break you. And now you now they're doing it through social media. So-called, I ain't never seen so many uh LGBTQ people in this in the so-called Negro community in my life, man. In my life. And guys are supposed to be tough. Guys are supposed to be tough. There ain't no such thing as no 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 gangster. They ain't talking about toxic masculinity. You can't even speak out against oppression. You can't even speak out against immorality without being condemned. Like you're afraid. Not afraid. I just don't go that way. Why well, can't speak? Now, LGBTQ is becoming the Jewish community. You, you anti-gay. Yeah. If it ain't right, if it don't line up with the Heavenly Father, then we're too busy trying to please men, accepting that. We want to accept that. To be seen by men. Don't give a damn if my channel gets shut down. We were teaching before they were was, was YouTube. The world was, yeah, how was I had no YouTube? The disciples ain't had no YouTube. A lot of y'all wouldn't even teach if you weren't seen because you would look, do it to be seen of men. If there weren't no more cameras, lights, and actions, you wouldn't even be out here. It's the truth, man. Read. Can I get this? Get 11 Go ahead. 14. This is Luke chapter 18, verse 11. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men, as extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up as so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other for everyone that exalted himself shall be abased and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted and this generation and social media is teaching our people how to exalt themselves you want to see me how many likes do you like me you don't even know these people man the most high knows your heart isn't that what the Christians say he know my heart yeah he knows your heart your heart is your mind and he knows that you're you're dubious you're devilish. And people are fulfilling the lust of their flesh at an all-time high now. And it's, it's seeping into the Israelite community. But what does 1 Peter 4, 17 you say? Get that. Read what you got. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 1, verse 29. Be not an hypocrite in the sight of men, and take good heed what thou speakest. Exalt not thyself, lest thou fall and bring dishonor upon thy soul. This is what this culture is teaching us. This is what the PFE, the pink flesh entity, this European nation is teaching you to be prideful. And what preceded the pride? A fall. It's teaching you to be arrogant, self-indulgent. Do us as thy wills. You do whatever you feel like doing. I can be whatever I want to be. If I'm a man, I want to be a woman, call me a woman. If I'm a woman, born a woman, call me a man. I'm, I'm whatever I want to be. That's ridiculous. Right, right. That's a false balance and abomination. And that's why America's going down, man. Oh, oh, right. Feminine oh. nation, man. Used to be the good old boys. Now they good old girls. <laughs> Don't even make no sense. Read. The, the Ku Klux Klan wearing cheerleading outfits now. Read. <laughs> and so God discovered thy secrets and cast thee down in the midst of the congregation. And that's what's happening. The Most High is discovering your secret. These pastors, these TV fakes, got boyfriends. This is ridiculous, man. How are you teaching the word of the Most High? You're a hypocrite. Read. Because thou camest not in truth to the fear of the Lord. That's the law. 
Wherever you hear that word truth, that's the law. And this is why, going back to the opening statement of this conversation, of this teaching, we got to get back to the laws, man. We. But thy heart is full of deceit. Your heart is full of deceit. And for the most part, our people have been fed deceit by deceit for bunch. That's why we got to... We got to perish, man. We got to be fasting. We got to be praying. You got to read, man. You got to detox from the contamination of America, man. You got to get away. You don't have time to fraternize with your enemy, man. All right, finish reading the, the six. What verse you at? Uh, verse one. Come on. Take heed that ye do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Read on. Therefore, when thou doest thy alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee. You, whatever you do, you're not supposed to do to be seen of men, to get praises of men. We're not out here for men to like us. People don't like us. Right. The police will come out here. We got a Bible in our hand, and we're a threat in America. That lets you know their disdain for the truth. I thought... Ronald Reagan said that America was founded on Judeo-Christian principles. Yep. And that, what's the Roman Judeo-Christian principle? Is homosexually or homosexual, is that something that the Christian principles are enforcing now in America? Absolutely. That's what they're enforcing now. Truth is a new hate speech, right? No. Can't tell you the truth. How about become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Well, truth would hurt to a devil. Truth would hurt to a liar. Truth would hurt to a deceiver. Truth would hurt to a manipulator. That's what truth. Uh, come on. Lions eat gazelles. Truth hurts liars. And we have been subject to a nation of liars and hypocrites since we've been brought over here, man. That's how we got over here. Just ask the Native American. I'll be your friend. Come on. Uh, let's. Let's have a dinner together. Matter of fact, let me keep you warm and give you a blanket full of smallpox. Come on, man. That's, that's the PFE's MO. And he laughs about it because he celebrates. That's the privilege that he wants to deny that he, you know, and say, I don't have that. We're all the same. No, we're not, man. Everybody ain't wicked like Esau, man. All right, read. As the hypocrites do in the synagogues, and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. That they may what? Have glory of men. A lot of our people had that get alone stuff. You see how they, they hate the truth, man. So they have glory, they glory of men. Read on. Verily I say unto you, they have the reward. They what? They have the reward. They what? They have the reward. So a lot of our people have their reward, man. Those shekels. What did Judas do with that silver? He couldn't do nothing, man, but kill himself with it. That's what many of you so-called Negroes gonna do, man. You, you out here killing yourself and you don't even know it. Because you're full of the wine of abomination. The full of the wine of that harlot. The virgin daughter of Babylon, man. Celebrating these Hellenistic days, man. It's ridiculous. Read what you got. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. It's almost impossible. Our people are not doing that in this day and age. In social media, they letting people know everything. They want, a lot of our people are doing this for the wrong reasons. Read. That thy alms may be in secret. That it may be what? In secret. We should do things what? In secret. Read on. And thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. That's the secret place. That's the place that where we should be praying. When we pray and make our prayers. Not at the well and wall bending over and so everybody can see us with your back exposed, bending over at the well and wall. You're supposed to be doing this in secret. That's not biblical. That's the pride of, of that nation, man. And we want to emulate them. You got so-called niggas talking about, no, we're we not the real Jews. We all Africans. How the hell are we all going to be Africans? If we all Africans, if Africans enslaved Africans, then who did the, uh, uh, who did the Egyptians enslave? Then that means you can't be the real Jew then. 
You see what I'm saying? You done etched yourself out. Charleston Heston, uh, Elizabeth Taylor. You need to go ahead with that nonsense. Charleston Heston. I was watching it recently. I'm gonna bring out this. Let you bring out this last one. But I was watching. It's called The Greatest Story Ever Told. I don't know if you're familiar with it. I'm a little older. But those that are probably over 50, you understand the greatest story ever told. And it had Charleston H Heston in it. But guess who played? They had Telly Savalas in there. A lot of y'all don't even know who that is. That's Kojak. But they had him in it. They had a lot of great actors. But guess who picked up the cross from, from so-called Jesus? Sidney Poitier. You know, a, a Jake. And he was young, and he was the one that picked up the car. All the other Edomites was looking at him. But the, but he was there. And I said, man, they were even trying to push that. You, you're a slave to so-called Jesus. You're still a slave to the PFE, to the pink flesh entity. That, they made sure they showed that in there. They were having, why you got everybody else was white. Everybody else was a, a PFE. But when it came to helping the Messiah, the white Jesus, to pick up his cross, you had to, oh yeah, now that's when a black man showed up. <laughs> that's when a black man, oh yeah, he came to help. He's the help. Where's the help? And that's all we've ever been to America is their help, man. That's all we ever been to Christianity. You know why Christianity has such a stronghold in America? The same why hip-hop got such a stronghold in America. But guess what? Does hip-hop benefit our people? And Christianity doesn't either. Go ahead, read this. This is going to be my, yeah. First Peter 4, 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. So this is what's getting ready to happen. And that's why it's happening to the Israelites, man. It's not happening to everybody. Come on. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? So we see what's going on because our time is drawing nigh. But we see how the Most High now is judging the nations, man. He's starting to destroy these wars and rumors of wars that spoke about in Matthew 24. We're starting to see this, man. And this is the time that we gather ourselves together. All right? According to Zephaniah 2 and 1, read. Verse 18, and if the righteous scarcely be saved. So it's only going to be a few of us that make it. If we scarcely be saved, because the overwhelming majority of us are going to be hypocrites. We in this, I want to be saved seen move. He gonna say, I never knew you. You was too busy posting on YouTube and want to know how many people were clicking and liking, man. You were click alike, right? <laughs> click likes and stuff. You want to know how many click likes you had. You know, subscribe to my channel, man. I'm so sick of this. I don't know what to do, man. How about you subscribe to your holly while you're holly shot? Hey. All right? How about you keep your commandments? Right. Stop being a hypocrite, man. Read. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where should the ungodly and the sinner appear? Where are they going to appear, man? We know it's going to be thermonuclear fire, man. And with that, I say shallow arms.